Ah, so today I'm going to show an example of a kind of thing that I use my 3D printer for. Um, now, there are lots of videos on YouTube that uh, show you all these lovely sort of items, decorative items and toys and nice things, uh, which are really interesting to look at, which kind of answers the question as to why there aren't so many <laughs> videos about practical items to make with a 3D printer. Um, it's because they're really kind of not that interesting and uh, yeah I think I have an example here that will entirely define the word not interesting but well it's to repair a vacuum reservoir and uh, for want of a better word it's a, a nipple that I'm going to be printing um, basically one of the vacuum hoses that goes onto this vacuum reservoir um, the nipple which is part of the original molding of the what is it? It's nylon, nylon vacuum reservoir has snapped off, which uh, yeah, get, yeah. But it is an ideal example of something to use a three D printer for in a sort of practical way, uh, because it's not available. It's a kind of one off, and uh, it's going to save a load of money. So here we go. So this is the item in question and uh, as you can see this is where a nipple used to be and uh, yeah the vacuum pipe that used to push onto this nipple now has nowhere to go. As you can see the uh, reservoir is made from um, nylon essentially PA6 with a glass fibre reinforcement. Um, yeah it would have been better if it was ABS I suppose but uh, well it's nylon so we'll deal with that. And on the other side, here is an example where the nipple is still in place. And as you can see, the uh, pipe pushes on quite nicely. So what we want is a similar situation on the other side where the other one has broken off. Before I start, I'm going to check the internal um, diameter of the bore uh, right down inside so that we can make sure that the parts made has the same internal bore as it enters into the reservoir eventually. So we're going to need some decent surfaces to work with. Um, so I'm drilling away all what's left of the uh, existing nipple so that we get a nice flat base. So once we've got a nice clean hole of a known size in it, I'm cutting off any remaining uh, parts of the nipple. And uh, I'm going to clean the hole out a slight bit just to get rid of some burrs and file it flat for a decent mating face. So this is a hole where our new nipple is going to fit and I'm just sort of roughly measuring the size of it just to double check it's still coming out as six and a half mil which is the drill bit I used and it's pretty damn close. We are going to uh, make the actual new nipple a slightly bigger outside diameter so that it uh, push fits and it all seals up quite nicely. So I usually like to sketch a part just on a good old fashioned piece of paper and a pen before going into CAD. This can quite often save you a lot of time in CAD going down a road which uh, you then suddenly realise after a bit of time designing it up in CAD that actually you hadn't really thought about something and it's not going to work and you need to start again. So uh, yeah, get all the major dimensions in and uh, this makes life much easier when moving over into CAD. So I use SolidWorks for all of my uh, 3D CAD work really. Um, I've got uh, quite a few years invested in SolidWorks um, I have tried Fusion 360 and to be honest I wish I could move to Fusion 360 because it, it's a more pleasant uh, working environment really than SolidWorks. However um, there are a bunch of features in SolidWorks that I need to use occasionally which means I really stuck with it and um, yeah I don't really want to end up having to use two different 3D CAD packages. So essentially the drawing is uh, pretty much as the sketch and uh, as this is mostly a circular object the best thing to do is a revolve. So I simply just draw one half of the profile and revolve an extrusion around that sketch. For 3D printing it out I'm going to save it as an STL and uh, then simply open it up into the slicer and I'm using a Simplify 3D here. And uh, I'm going to be making it out of ABS, so I take my standard ABS profile and as it is a little part and I want it to be fairly tough, I'm going to set the infill to 100% so we get a completely solid part. And uh, yeah, the rest of my profile remains as is. So we save it out as G-code and basically just send it off to the printer. Wait a while and yeah, we should have a new nipple. And there it is. And it's green. <laughs> because I only have 
green ABS currently in stock. Uh, yeah, it printed out okay. Um, if you really wanted it to look much nicer, I could have probably printed out 100 microns, uh, but you can't see it. The main thing is that it's strong enough and uh, it's going to do the job. So as I put a chamfer around the bottom of it, I can just about sort of wedge it in the hole and make sure all the sizing's all right. And it looks pretty good. So I'm going to use a hot air station to soften the nylon and uh, push it in. This will give me a, a really decent sort of seal around it and uh, also provide some mechanical anchorage. I then seal up the end of the nipple so that nothing can get inside and uh, run a small amount of very thin CA glue around the flat mating faces so that we get some wicking in between them. I then sprinkle liberally with some sodium bicarbonate and brush it off. This goes rock hard instantly and provides an airtight seal. I apply with another layer or two of CA glue and sodium bicarbonate just to build it up and give it some further anchoring support. The bonding's so hard that you can rub it down with sandpaper, which I did, and then dipped it in some dye just to make it all blend in. It ain't the prettiest thing in the world, but it does the job, and uh, for sure it is stronger than the original part. So there you go. Not exactly a stunning beauty, but when it's something you just can't buy, hmm? I plan on making some more of these type of videos in the future, sort of like, you know, start to finish practical 3D prints. Um, hopefully next time it'll be something a bit more interesting.